everybody. I just would like to take a second to welcome you to today's presentation. Um, today we're going to be talking about transitioning to the community, but there's a few things I'd just like to mention before we get started. So I wanted to mention that these webcasts are part of a larger joint initiative by the Government of Alberta called the Human Services Learning Series. For more information about these series, check your emails for regular updates to, or go to hslearningseries.ca. You will be able to pose your questions to me directly via our live chat window. If you have yet to access the chat, I recommend you try it out now. Scroll down from your viewing window to find it. I will address as many of these questions as I can at the end of the presentation. Paige Boudreau is our online moderator for today's session, so she will pose your web, cat, web chat questions to me directly during the question and answer period. So today's session is also being recorded and the video will be posted on the HS Learnings website about two weeks from now. So let's just get started. So my name is Jessica Impola. I am the Acting Transition Coordinator at the Stedward Centre and I will be talking to you about the transitioning to community. Please find below my email and feel free to email me if you have any questions or comments and things you'd like to discuss later on. So just a few overviews about what we're going to be talking about today. So firstly, I just want to introduce what the Stedward Centre is, who we are, our mission, principles we live by, and the programs, and then I'll focus on the community transition model. So the Stedward Centre is a non-for-profit organization housed within the University of Alberta in the Faculty of Physical Education and Recreation. So we are a research centre that provides adapted physical activity and sport programs for children, youth and adults who live with impairments. So our mission is to inspire individual achievement in adapted physical activity and parasport by conducting and applying innovative research, widely sharing expert knowledge and delivering highly successful programs for individuals experiencing disability. So there are a few principles that govern where, what directions our programs go towards. So living with an impairment is best understood by those living with an impairment. Adapted physical activity and parasport development should be accessible by all those who choose to participate. Our decisions and approaches are informed by research and our work informs research. Meaningful inclusion requires communities and individuals informed about the possibilities and more can be accomplished in partnership than alone. So at the Stedward Centre, we have five ma main program areas. Firstly, the Freebie Me program, which is for children and youth experiencing disability. And this program focuses on motor skill development as well as fitness and different endeavours children wish to pursue. We have our adapted fitness program for adults. So this is for adults in mostly a fitness setting, but we have introduced some recreational programs such as yoga and Zumba as well. Then we have the functional electrical stimulation program, whereby electrical impulses are applied to muscles to create movement. Um, and this we have at the Stedward Centre as well as a part of the community transition model as well. Next we have athlete development for Paris. So this is where we have recreation athletes all the way up to high performance athletes pursuing uh, Paralympic Games. And we do have recently our swimming program and track and field programs added within that. And today I'll be talking about the community exercise transition program. So the reality is, is there are barriers to community participation. So when we look at this, Rimmer has outlined about 10 areas that succinctly identify what those barriers are. So we go through the built-in natural environment, such as is it accessible, can people get in, cost and economic, can people afford a membership, uh, emotional and psychological, how are people being perceived if they have a disability and what's that environment like. Next we have equipment, can people use the equipment that's provided out there. Codes, regulations and guidelines, this has to do with building codes, um, what guidelines or policies the facilities may have. Information, is information available to everybody? Do they know if it's a facility that's accessible or not? Knowledge, education and training, that one speaks more towards is the training out there for professionals who work with individuals with disabilities? Uh, perceptions and attitudes, how things are being perceived, especially if you are the person with a disability or if you're not. Policies and procedures, can guide dogs go into facilities? Is there an extra fee if somebody needs to bring in a caregiver? And then resource availability, what is out there and how can we get the word out? So the community transition model in its finality is what you see on the screen today. So there are a couple different areas and I'll speak to each today, but I wanna mention Firstly, the catalyst events. So these are the events that get people starting their programs with us. 
It could be anything from a referral from a doctor, a referral from a phys um, physical therapist or recreation therapist, or even the individual themselves. And then we go over to the opposite side of the model where we have the dedicated supports. On this end of this, the spectrum, <coughs> these are the things that we need to do to help the individual be successful in their citizenship through community involvement. So I want to go through each of these today and kind of describe how we address all of them. And this model was f developed by, in partnership actually, with our um, staff at the Stedward Center as well as the faculty of phys ed and rec um, professors and their students. So individual readiness. So this speaks to the whole transition process for the individual themselves. Is there gradual versus sudden? So here we take into consideration, is the individual ready to transition right away into their community setting? Or do they need a couple weeks at, in a specialized setting such as the Stedward Center? So there's no one um, answer to that. It really comes down to what the individual is comfortable with. So then we look at education, resources, and tours that we provide. So the, when the individual comes with us, uh, usually they're not too sure about what is out there for them. So we want to do a tour with them, see how they feel in the community, and then provide them any resources they may need in terms of knowledge about fee reduction programs available to them. Next, as I mentioned previously, we just want to involve them in that whole planning process. It is about them um, and them being successful too. So then when we get to the community, the individualized exercise program is the focus. So all the exercises and anything we choose is for that individual and the equipment is made sure that they can access that. There's no use in putting an exercise program together that the individual will not even use. Um, and then after that, we support them finding suitable fitness centers. So whether that's what's near them or their friends go to, family goes to, they get to decide and we support through that process. So the process looks, they come to us, there's one-on-one -on -one support which reflects as three or four sessions, and then it's followed by follow-ups down the road. And that could range from two weeks after to a month after, or even a year after. It really depends on the individual. We just support them throughout that whole process. So the next part is community readiness. So is the community ready for individuals with disabilities? Um, so we developed partnerships with 25 different fitness centers throughout the city of Edmonton and surrounding areas. So that enables us to go with individuals to these centers that we've partnered with and have a successful workout program for them. We also do adapted physical activity symposiums and we have one coming up in 2017. These adapted physical activity symposiums focus on the, the areas of adapted physical activity and parasport, so it brings together professionals and individuals and students um, interested in the areas of adapted physical activity and parasport and it allows for that hands-on training as well as the theory and the research to come all into one place. Accessibility walkthroughs are something we also do with the managers um, of the facility so we can go through and see this is accessible, this is what needs to change and they take all that into play especially if they get grants to change the facility. And then involvement of staff through the transition process. So we want to make sure the community frontline staff um, can be involved in that process, especially because they're the ones that are going to be providing the support. So for example, we have in the fitness center, there's fitness attendants, and we want to make sure that they know, okay, this person needs potentially help adjusting one of the settings on the machine. Um, so we show them how they can do that, but still enable independence in the community. And then we want to make sure we access first learnings from student levels. So that's why we have student teachings in our volunteer programs. Uh, we have practicum student programs and student presentations that we conduct. So when these individuals become professionals in their field of work, this is not the first time they're seeing these things. Another aspect of the model is the physical environment. So we got a grant to conduct accessibility audits, specifically the AIM-free accessibility audits um, through the Human Rights Education and Multiculturalism Fund. So we audited about 25 of all of our partnership facilities three years ago. And through these audits, we were able to generate reports for each of the facilities on different areas such as the locker rooms, the bathrooms, the fitness center, their policies and procedures, the equipment they had, parking facilities, and et cetera. So these reports provided the management with an idea of what areas were accessible, 
what areas they needed to work on if they got those grants and what areas they could improve without necessarily pouring a lot of their budget into. Just easy fixes and then permanent fixes down the road that would involve more money. From these accessibility audits, we were able to sit down with some of the centers and talk to them about those changes that needed to be made and also recommend multi-use equipment um, rather than specific to a certain population so that is widely used equipment throughout the center itself. And furthermore, we're on accessibility committees so that we can further impact what changes happen within those facilities. So here are some of the partners, uh, centers that we we're with. So the YMCA, the McEwen Sport and Wellness, Transalta Tri-Leisure Center, Strathcona County, the City of Edmonton, Service Place in St. Albert, the Dow Center, excuse me, and the University of Alberta and the Leduc Recreation Center. So those are some of the facilities that we go to. So another aspect of the model are these community opportunities. So we want to make sure that individuals, once they identify a community that they want to go to, that it's available for them. So such items include fee reduction programs. So the City of Edmonton specifically has something called the Leisure Access Pass that individuals apply to and um, see if they can get availability to have the subsidized pass for them and their family. Peer programs, so this, a lot of places people want to go, they want to know somebody, they want to develop kind of that group that they go and see. Um, so we want to make sure that there maybe are, we set up a certain time that individuals go to where they see other individuals who may be in similar situations. Um, social networking has been a huge part of a lot of our programs. Um, individuals find that if they have that social network, they become more successful within that program. So for instance, we have 8 a.m. or on a Friday is we have a group of five individuals and then 10 a.m. they go for coffee after their workout. So it's that peer programming and social networking that has really helped. Increased program choices. So we want to make sure there are choices to make people active more often in the community and their continued connection with the Stedward Center. So this is where if they want to come to the Stedward Center but don't necessarily want to leave the Stedward Center, they'll always be a part of it. They'll always get that invite to our Christmas parties, different training, and they always have the opportunity to come back to our specialized setting if they so choose. The next aspect is our volunteer programs. So this is where we want to connect the community to the Stedward Center as well as vice versa. So we enable these volunteer programs to do that as well. So here is just a quick um, testimonial of an individual that I worked with in the community. So I'll just read that for you. So initially I was referred by my Glen Rose Hospital physical therapist. At first being apprehensive, I soon realized this next step was part of my continued progress. After my fitness assessment at the Studward Center, I was asked to select a facility for my community transition. Service place in St. Albert seemed like a logical choice and soon scheduled my first meeting. We had connected numerous times by email and from inception knew that she would be extremely committed to my overall progress. Over our visits, the consultant proved to be approachable, engaging, and very dedicated to my improvement. That level only increased and never strayed from the patient's determination and perseverance with each and every session. As such, her kindness and consideration has continued to inspire me to not only achieve, but to surpass my goals. On behalf of my entire family, we wish to thank the Stedward Center. So this was um, a scenario where an individual was referred to us from one of the recreation therapists in partnership with the physical therapist at the Glen Rose Center. So he came to us, um, had his fitness assessment, consulted with him through that progress. And at the time he was very apprehensive um, as to what the facility would be like and how he would be perceived. A lot of the times individuals with disabilities feel that they'll be singled out in communities, so that apprehension arises. But you also have the opposite spectrum where individuals don't want to be associated with other individuals with disabilities, so they want to go right to the community right away. So we support either one of those streams. It really comes down to the individual. But specific to this um, scenario right here, St. Albert was a great welcoming environment for that individual. They lived there, so they didn't have to commute all the way to the Stedward Center at the University of Alberta to do that. So it was a place where he could join in his community with his family as well. So that was very a positive experience. So that is my presentation. So if you have any questions, please write them in your box right now. So the first question we have is, how do you develop your partnerships with the community centers? 
So our partnerships have been developed through time. It's literally going to the managers of the facility, explaining what our program is, that we're not necessarily an external personal trainer coming to work and take clientele away from the current personal trainers there, that we're actually trying to facilitate um, a, a transition process for individuals within the community so that they can access all of those wonderful facilities that are out there and close to them in their community. So we sit down, explain what the Stedward Center does, explain our role, and that we're just there for the first three sessions to get that participant started and going working towards their goals. Our next question is, what were the findings of the accessibility audits that were conducted? So the accessibility audits, um, in general, the city of Edmonton and surrounding facilities had an average rating of 23.1% accessible. On the aim-free audit, however, it doesn't necessarily say if a lower score is better than a higher one. So from all the assumptions, the lower you score, the worse the accessibility is in there. So there's still a lot of room to improve, but again, this was three years ago, so the new facilities that are developing have taken a lot of those considerations into play. Um, so f they will be better than they were three years ago. Our next question is, is this the only type of program of this nature in Edmonton? The community has taken this program more so. So you do find at the YMCA, for instance, they do have programs for people with disabilities or just uh, elder adults. Um, it's called the Bridge to Fitness program. So it mimics some of this, but in terms of the whole transitioning process, that's pretty unique to the Studward Center itself. Great. Our next question is, are there subsidies for individuals that might want to enter the programs? So from the Studward Center itself, we do provide subsidized rates for individuals who receive um, assisted income or senior health benefits or things like that. We're always willing to work with the individual on the set price. For instance, the transition program itself without the subsidized rates costs $150 and our subsidized rates are $115. If individuals are looking for further subsidized um, subsidy from that, that's a conversation we have with them and adjust the price according to that what the individual needs. Our next question is, is there a list of who you have partnered with? Yes, on our website, stedwardcenter.ualberta.ca, um, there is a list on under community transition. Uh, however, if you don't, can't find it on there, we're just going through website changes right now, you can always email me and I can get that list for you. Um, our next question is, what types of partnerships do you have with Parasport organizations? Yeah, through the Parasport organizations, we work with their athletes mostly. Um, so their organizations refer their athletes to us to get strength and conditioning programs. Um, primarily as that's where it stands, it's continually growing as this is one of our very popular areas. So um, for instance, we just partnered with Special Olympics to run one of their um, powerlifting courses coming up here soon. Fantastic. And um, our last question is about social networking. Is there something that occurs outside the center with social events or uh, something that occurs online? Uh, we do have a Facebook page, Twitter, through that media sometimes members connect that way and participants, so they use that platform primarily. Um, but that's primarily all I've heard. Yeah, thank you for those questions. Um, and thanks for joining the webcast today. Um, as I mentioned in the opening, we are part of the Government of Alberta's Human Services Learning Series, which will be running the third week of every month through June 2017. So this series covers topics from, uh, like the one you saw today, but there's other series that talk about employment first, fetal alcohol syndrome, um, and spectrum disorder initiative, sorry, and the Office of Public Guardian and Trustees. So stay tuned for information on next month's webcast. So to get updates on registration information about each of these sessions, please email us at, at gov.ab.ca on the link below there and ask to be added to our mailing list. You can also find past and future website webcasts and sign up at hslearnings.ca. Today's webcast was recorded and the video will be posted online along with videos from all the previous webcasts. The video link will also be sent out to all of the registered registrants in the near future. We encourage you to share this video with anyone you think 
may be interested. If you have any feedback about today's webcast, please email us at the link above and let us know. You will also be receiving a feedback email from us. Please take time to let us know what you thought of this webcast today, and we'd love to hear your ideas. Have a wonderful afternoon and hope to see you next time. Thank you.